Hi, my name's Peter Wilson. I'm the veterinarian here at Corumban Sanctuary. Alex Griffiths was the founder of Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary. He was a true visionary, a conservationist. He purchased acres of land to keep for one purpose, to create a safe haven for our wildlife. In the early days, people heard about what Alex was doing and started to drop off injured animals to the sanctuary. Alex would do his best to nurse them back to health and release them into the wild. This was the beginning of a legacy that would become one of the busiest wildlife hospitals in the world. Alex must be incredibly proud of what he started and whether he ever imagined it would get to this place, I, I doubt it, but still, he would know that you know, this is what he pictured, what he wanted when he first started you know, the wildlife hospital with the little bits of work he did. I've been working here for 25 years, so I'm going into my 26th year. I did vet nursing at the hospital for 13 years, mainly at our old hospital and a little bit at our current new hospital. And I've been here for 23 years. <laughs> Back then we had two hospitals, so separate to, to what it is now, and we had our main one over at Stock Hospital, which covered all our animals in the park. And then we had this little old house building on the far west side, um, where we had all the animals that came in from the wild. It was a house that was falling apart, but we converted it into a wildlife hospital. Yeah, the conditions for this, the smoko room were absolutely squalid. It was, it was amazing, but they were just the best times. It was magic, I loved it. I remember a night when an echidna escaped out of its enclosure and you know they're little escape artists echidnas but anyway we've rocked up in the morning this echidna's ripped off all the skirting board is having a feast on all the termites that you know were living throughout this old hospital so it was it was kind of crumbling around us but it was a very happy echidna you, you know just the experience is like oh my goodness i have a bat flying onto me and it was not a frightening moment it was a moment of like oh wow this is exciting stuff and it was my first day so everything was just exciting it was a little juvenile brolga called Ichabod and I got to walk him around the park for exercise which was really important for his bone growth and development and I just thought it was the coolest job in the world. The big change came when we had the, the big floods here that um, you know we had over two foot of water going through the wildlife hospital and you know we had all the media crews here you know talking about what happened and how devastated the wildlife hospital was and and from that we had some wonderful people knock on our door and say how can we help what can we do for you uh, one of those donors followed up and then they purchased us an ultrasound and then they came back and they actually put a whole lot of money to develop our wonderful raptor rehabilitation facility and it was a, it was a great relationship there as they, they gave us 15,000 for the ultrasound and 15,000 for, the, for the, the raptor enclosure. And I got a phone call and, you know, and this, this wonderful couple said, hey, let's meet up for a coffee. And I thought, oh, this, is, this is great. You know, we're, we're going to get another 15,000 for, for something. And we sat down for a coffee and they handed over a cheque for half a million dollars and said, go and build your wildlife hospital. And it was that moment that made all of this happen. And when I looked to come to the Corumbin Wildlife Hospital, I recognised that it was somewhere that is really special because it does very, very high-end work but without any ongoing funding. What that means is that the community own this hospital, which is, is really unique. There really isn't anywhere else that I've ever known that's like that. It's here and it's great and, and a lot of good things happen, you know, with, with collaboratively here. But its ongoing existence is also dependent on continuing support. If we didn't have this facility, we didn't have the people and the passion to continue it on, we're going to lose a lot of species of animals. Life as a, a wildlife vet here, sadly, there's, there's a lot of tragedy. Um, a lot of the animals that come into us, their injuries are, are far beyond what we can do to save them. And unfortunately, we do lose some of our patients. And that is, you know, can, be, can be really you know, hard on everyone, hard on the staff, hard on the volunteers. But the very special stuff is being able to release animals back out into the wild. You know, that moment of opening the cage and seeing the bird fly away, and that's what it's all about. And that's where, I guess, we get special joy with the job that we do, being able to release these animals back out into the wild.
for us to get further ahead and really honouring what Alex Griffith started, we need the support of everyone out there. We need the support of you.